couple of syllables. Uh, and also, you can tweet about this live with at PHP Limburg, uh, nicely set up by uh, Gabrielle. Are we ready? Okay, we're we running. Are we live? Um, so yeah, this is real time, um, a real time talk about time. Uh, you can follow me, you can follow Limburg, and you can tweet about it. Uh, my notifications are off, so your tweets are not being displayed live. Uh, so yeah, as many of you may know already, my name is Hannes, uh, and I come from a place called uh, Gent. Gent, <laughs> not Genk. Um, it's only two hours drive away with a couple of accidents in between, but it's fine. Um, and I work for a company called 800.com. Uh, 800.com sells 800 toll-free numbers in the US. So I work for a US company. Uh, and we sell vanity numbers like 1-800-911 or 1-800-4-lawyer or whatever. Uh, it's basically when you have your uh, keypad on your phone, you can type lawyer and it will transform this into uh, digits or um, figures uh, instead of actual um, letters. So Hertz would translate into, I don't know what, I'm not an American so I don't know the system I, by heart. Um, but this is what we do, we sell numbers and we can do call routing. You can get phone calls on this number and it will be uh, forwarded to your phone or you can use it for SMS, fax, whatever. It's, uh, it's a telecommunic telecommunication company but I'm a so senior software engineer there. Uh, but my talk will be about something completely different which is time. Um, I want to preface this talk with a couple of um, disclaimers. Uh, the Earth is a globe, okay? Um, <laughs> if you don't believe this is true, then you have nothing to do here because everything will be based on uh, the theory of a globe uh, Earth and the Earth being uh, rotating around the sun and blah, 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 because everything is based on this. The theory is based on this. So if you are a flat earther, you can uh, either do something else or leave the room. Um, I will be talking about religion. I try not. I will try not to offend anyone if you're from a different religion. I'm just trying to state the facts and I'm trying to uh, explain why some things are different in different religions. Uh, by no mean by by no means I try to offend any religion. So that's just to say. Uh, a couple of disclaimers before this talk. So, um, time. We all know time. You can write down the timestamp. We can meet up with friends and we can send them, like, hey, let's meet up at this time. Uh, there's different formats. Uh, we can look at our watch. This is a digital watch. You can have watches with, uh, with more analog watches with, how do you call them? Gauges? Sorry? Handle? Yeah, maybe. Um, there's different ways to um, talk about time, send time, um, meet up in time, um, deal with time. But uh, to get to the origin of time, we have to go a long time back, <coughs> a lot of time. Uh, we have to go back to 1,500 before Christ. Before Christ, so this is basically 2019 plus 1,500 years ago. I'm not gonna do the math. Um, this is a sundial that they found in Egypt. This is one of the earliest uh, archaeological findings they have about time. Uh, they, ha they didn't have any uh, digital clocks. They didn't have any mechanical clocks. They did their time calculation or they ti their time syncing in between people to meet up um, based on a sundial. Uh, and this particular sundial uh, shows 12 different uh, sections, which means one section for uh, sunrise, 10 sections for in between hours, and one section for the sun, sunset. Sunrise, sunset, yeah. Yes. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. So there's like 12 different sections. I can tap twice. Yeah, there's 12 different sections. It's not working super well. There's 12 different sections. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is how um, this, this sundial works during the day. So we have 12 hours during the day and 12 hours during the night. Uh, and this is how we get to a current, our current system of 24 hours a day. Um, so yeah, 
10 daylight hours, one twilight, one dusk, and we also have 12 hours during the, the, during the night based on the stars. So at night we can see the stars. But um, those stars, you can only see when it's actually dark. So you need to wait long enough after sunset, sunset to actually see them. Um, and the Egyptians in 1500 before Christ, or the astronomer Egyptians, they figured out there's like 12 different stars which are almost evenly spaced. And based on that, uh, based on the angle with your horizon, they could say, well, it's this time in the night. So the astronomers back in the day, they figured out a way. When you um, use those 12 hours and you extrapolate them, you actually have 36 hours because there's 12 hours plus a few hours before and after where you don't really see the stars. Uh, and in total, you can evenly space this in 36 hours. And this is the origin of the 360 degree circle. So the uh, Egyptian uh, culture is responsible for 360 degrees in a circle, which doesn't really make sense, but it's based on stars in the sky. Um, and then, so stars in the sky, but you can also, um, like later in the time, they also figured out, hey, we can even separate this into like 10 uh, time frames in between the th uh, 36 stars. So we have a separation of 360 degrees. And one degree can be separated into 60. Uh, they're called partes minutae primae. And this is the origin of minutes. So we have 60 minutes in one hour. And then they also have a separation or uh, how do you call this, um, parts of a minute, and we have 60 uh, partes minut minutae secundae. So you have primae and secundae. So the first one is the origin of minutes, parte minutae primae, and the second one, partes minutae secundae, is the origin of seconds. So you have 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in one minute. This is the origin of um, minutes and seconds in one hour um, and this is why they also say it's um, the angle between this is so many degrees plus so many seconds and minutes or minutes and seconds so this is the reference between minutes and seconds with time and with a circle uh, with a with the calculation of an angle anyway um, a lot of history a lot of uh, like how we get to certain uh, uh, standards but um, the sundial is not really super accurate because if the sun doesn't shine uh, or if you live in a different space, but, uh, for example, if you live uh, one hour walking away, the sundial is actually a little bit different. So it's really based on your location. Uh, and to fix this, they start inventing like mechanical devices called clocks with the dials. This is an emoji, it's a super simple representation of a clock. Anyway. Um, this is invented to keep track of time and to say how, um, or this is used f for the first time in the, with the invention of a railway system. So in the US, they had a lot of train stations and to say the train will leave at this time, they didn't have a watch, so I'm just, it's a modern time way of saying it at this time. Um, so they start inventing like mechanical clocks to say the train will actually leave at this time. Don't rely on sundials anymore. We have something mechanical that can tell you like it's this time of the day. Um, and they start actually syncing those clocks in between major cities. So Boston had a clock, the train station in Boston had a clock, uh, the one in New York had a clock and they would sync up. And this is the way they actually formed time zones back in the day. So major cities start to aggregate more and say, well, we'll just sync with the Boston clock. And Boston was for a long time um, the reference point for the Eastern time zone. So in the US, there's four different time zones now, nowadays. Actually, there's more. Uh, but the four major different time zones are Eastern, Central, Mountain Time, and Pacific Time. Uh, Pacific Time is the worst because it's like nine hours away from here, or even 10. Anyway, I work with someone in Oregon, and it's, it's the worst. Um, they also have exceptions, like Hawaii has a different time zone. Uh, Alaska is different as well, Caribbean and Puerto Rico. They're all different and like they have small changes or changes with uh, daylight saving time and stuff. In Europe, it's kind of easy. Uh, we have Central European time zone, which is uh, abbreviated as CET. Uh, the problem here is it's quite big. 
So in Kosovo, in the far east of the, I can use the pointer, in the far east, whoa, in the far east of the time zone, the sun actually rises, I don't know, somewhere at 619. Um, and the sun rises at the same time, uh, or on this day, uh, the sun rises at 619, 19 past six in the morning in Kosovo. But in Vigo, the far west of this time zone in Spain, uh, it's like right above Portugal, right here. The sun actually rises at 8.07. So there's almost two hours, or is it more than two hours? Almost two hours of difference in between sunrise. But all of these cities and all of this uh, this uh, territorial space in between, they're all observing. This is how we say it in like time zone uh, um, terminology. They're all observing Central European time. It's okay, it works, uh, but there's a lot of people who hate it. Like my, I, ha I work with uh, a couple of people in Poland and they work literally from 8 a.m. because they have a lot of daytime before 8 a.m. Um, and they stop working at 3 or 4 p.m. just because it's dark at 3.30. Um, and then there's also a thing called daylight saving time. Or no, let's, let's talk about uh, UTC first. UTC stands for Universally uh, Coordinated Time. UCT, T, UTC. Okay, let's try in French. Temps coordonné universel. No, that doesn't work either. Uh, it doesn't work in English and it doesn't work in French, but they just said, let's use UTC as, a, as an abbreviation, but it's not in English and it's not in French. Oh. It's pretty weird. Anyway, uh, the Eastern Daylight Saving Time, or no, Eastern Daytime Time Zone, or I don't know what EDT was, Eastern Day, yeah, Eastern Daytime, I think, uh, is UTC minus four. And Central European Summertime um, is UTC plus two. So you can basically annotate or um, compare all these different time zones with UTC. And what is UTC? UTC is um, noon, 12 uh, at noon, is when the sun is at its highest over the null meridian or the line that goes through Gre Greenwich. Greenwich? Greenwich. Um, so yeah, all of the, <laughs> at the sun is at its highest, is right above this line <laughs> at 12 in UTC. And then there's another line on the other side of the world. Anyone know the name of that line? It's this weird, it's not even a, it's not even a line. <laughs> um, <coughs> this is the international date line. So territories on this side of the line, um, they are one day behind, no, behind on um, territories on this side of the line. Uh, so Hawaii at, at this moment is, um, 5th of December, and in Samoa and Kiribati, those are like um, mid-Pacific islands, um, over there it's already December 6th, but they're basically watching the same sun at the same time, but they have a different observ observation of time. So we went from sundials to mechanical clocks, but mechanical clocks, they tend to fail, and we need something that, like more robust to sync in between, like sync all the servers and stuff, so we have a thing called atomic clocks. And those atomic clocks are super precise, actually too precise. Um, and this, the picture here is an atomic clock based on a laser. Um, laser is a beam of light and light is an um, electromagnetic wave. And electromagnetic waves are waves that, uh, like sine waves. So you can filter all of the different uh, frequencies to s until you have only one frequency and one color. And this color of the laser defines uh, the, the wavelength, or like wavelength and color, they're like different uh, way of saying like what kind of la laser beam is this or what kind of color is this. And so based on the number of oscillations of this wave, you can say, oh, we have so many thousand oscillations, this is one second. So there's like one fixed wavelength and uh, based on the like constants, like uh, the, the speed of sound, the speed of light, sorry, or the electromagnetic um, speed. The speed of light and the electromagnetic speed are the same. Uh, we'll come back to this later. So based on this wavelength, they can say, well, so many oscillations is one second, done. No one's arguing about this. Uh, this is the wavelength, this is the color. 
uh, of, the, of the laser beam. And this is one second and we'll use this forever. Uh, the problem with this is it's too accurate. Um, we're observing time, I'll, I'll come back to this later. Um, yeah, is this just a replication of the previous slide? Yes, it is. Um, so every, um, every time zone is based on um, a difference with UTC, but there's like always exceptions. Uh, India, for example, is five and a half hours ahead of UTC. Uh, and then there's, I mean, one hour was not difficult enough and half an hour is not dif difficult enough. So Nepal is five hours and 45 minutes ahead of UTC. Nepal is also the only country in the world without a rectangular flag. They have like two triangles, whatever. They just want to be special. That's not offensive, by the way. It's just they're different and they, that's how they do it. Um, le now let's come to a daylight saving time. A lot of people say, ah, oh, fuck, I hate this changing of time. Sorry for the profanity. Uh, I, hate I hate daylight saving time. I don't want to switch my clocks because it messes with my biorhythm. My kid wakes up. Sorry? Uh, no, <laughs> my computer does it, my phone does it, so whatever. Um, basically the thing is uh, in spring, every spring we uh, move the, the hour one hour ahead and every fall or autumn, wherever you are in the world, what kind of English you use, you we turn the, the clock back. Um, note, not everyone does this and not everyone does it the same way. For example, um, yeah, we do it. Uh, we switch from CET to CEST. Those are two different uh, abbreviations for two different time zones. So we move or we start to observe CEST uh, starting in spring and we start to observe CET starting in autumn or fall. Um, don't be fooled, we're not like saving any time or any daylight. The, I mean, the sun go, comes up and goes down. We're not saving anything. Um, the, the way to remember whether we should move the clock one hour forward or backward is pretty simple. Spring forward, fall backward. So in the spring, we um, move the, the hour one hour forward, so two hours becomes three, and tr three becomes two in fall, because fall backward. So in actually in the southern, ha southern hemisphere, the spring and the fall are backwards as well. So right now it's uh, spring in Brazil and like southern hemisphere, basically any country below the equator. And over there, they actually do the reverse, but not in every country and not in every territory. The reason for daylight saving time is this. Um, in Helsinki, uh, the, the daylight is pretty significant, uh, significantly different in the shortest day versus the longest day of the year. For example, the shortest day of the year, the sun rises in Helsinki at 9.24 a.m. and goes down at 3.54. Uh, the sun set uh, on the longest day, um, no, sorry, I, I was wrong. So uh, the, the shortest day of the year, um, wow, this is complicated. <laughs> so the shortest day of the year, uh, the sunrise, this is just plain wrong, I think. It's 9.24, uh-huh. So from 9 till 3 p.m. or something, and then, uh, yeah. Okay, so in the longest day, the sunrise is at 3.54 a.m. and the sunset is at 20 or 10.50. So the, the shortest day is only like six hours and the longest day is almost 12 hours. If you go above the line, Kiftkirking, whatever, I don't know how it's, what's the, what's the line in English? <laughs> Maybe. Anyway. There's two lines. There's two lines in, on the Earth, and if you go above that, or more northern, or more southern than those lines, you actually experience days where it's like 24/7 uh, daylight, and vice versa. In in winter, it's uh, dark 24 hours. Uh, in Quito, Quito is uh, the capital of. Quiz. Uh, I think it's from Ecuador. Uh -huh, Ecuador. It's the uh, capital of Ecuador. Yeah? Okay, you're, you're South American, no, so. No, no, I, I said Peru first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's Lima, Lima. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so Quito is the capital of Ecuador, Ecuador, Equator. Um, so it's pretty close to the equator, Quito, the city. 
and the, the sunrise is at 6.08 or 6.12, depending if you're talking about the shortest or the longest day. So it's actually like always 12 hours a day. They, they, they don't really experience like long days or short days. So for them, it doesn't make any sense to like move one hour ahead or, for, or, or, or forward or back. Uh, because they, they just have the same amount of daylight in, in one day, whether it's winter or summer. Uh, they typically have a tropical system instead of like season uh, or rain season, no rain season, stuff like this. So it's based on, based on uh, where the sun is or where the earth is compared to the sun. Because the earth, um, it's a globe, uh, obviously, um, and it's rotating across its own axis, but the the Earth itself is also rotating around the Sun, and the axis is not the same, it is angled uh, with the plane of which it uh, rotates around the Sun. So based on where we are in the year, we have day longer days or shorter days based on where you are on the, on the Earth. So the further away from the equator, the bigger the changes are between the shortest day and the longest day, going from zero hours of daylight to 24 hours of daylight. So for a lot of regions, it does make sense to shift the hour a bit to like wake up earlier instead of uh, being in your bed for four hours when the sun is up. Uh, a lot of places like India, um, Mexico, uh, north of Brazil, uh, equator, of course, uh, a lot of those places, they don't, they don't shift their time in winter or summer. It doesn't make sense for them because the day is actually the same length. Also, um, I said spring forward, fall backward, <laughs> but it's like depends where, where you live because um, the switch this year from winter time to summer time, so EDT to EST, was Eastern time. I'm talking about the US region, uh, was on March 10th, but in Europe we were lagging behind. We were a couple of weeks later. So March 31st, we only then we switched to summertime or daylight saving time. So it's kind of awkward, um, especially because uh, when you're trying to deal with calendar events and the calendar event has a, anyway, um, long story. Uh, one time I was in Canada and I had a meeting with a guy in, in UK. So we said, uh, UK is by the way, not uh, Central European. It's more like the same time zone as Portugal. Um, I set a calendar event and I said, yeah, we'll meet at this time and this will be this time for you and it will be this time for me. I, was, I set a calendar event and I tagged it as Eastern Standard Time because I was in Canada. Um, and the guy canceled the meeting and I said, okay, let's do next week, but same time. I just dragged the calendar, I, I, calendar item to the next week. And for me, it said the same time. Um, but then I realized that in Europe, they switched time zone when, uh, but for me, I wasn't. So I kept the same time of the day, and the guy said, why did you move it one hour? We said, we agreed on staying at 1 p.m. for me. Uh, so it turns out the uh, US and, or US Canada, whatever, the region there, North America, switched from uh, winter time to summer time, and the UK didn't, or vice versa. And because I tagged the calendar event to have this t time zone, uh, I actually didn't keep the same time for both of us. So that's, that's how I found out that we, didn't, we don't uh, switch to daylight saving time at the same moment. Um, also in Brazil, uh, this is a map of Brazil time zones. It's kind of, kind of complicated. It's one country, but it's a big country. So they have different time zones. And in the north, they, uh, there's only one time zone the whole year round. But in the south, so further from the equator, they actually switch to daylight saving time in summer. So there's like one, two, three, four, five different regions, and two of those regions actually switch to daylight saving time. Uh, it's kind of complicated. And same is true with uh, Australia. Um, Australia is UTC plus eight, nine and a half, uh, nine and a half or ten and a half, uh, depend, depending on the time of the year, uh, plus 10 or plus 10 plus 11. So it's, it's not going from eight to nine, <laughs> Uh, but eight to nine and a half, so it's kind of complicated. So you really have to like stay stay on top of your ta uh, game and know who you're talking about in uh, who you're talking with in Australia. Um, I think I'm not sure. I didn't check. Uh, I think they switched to daylight saving time at the same time. That would be awkward. That would be extremely awkward. That would be like the whole cluster. Whatever. And then there's uh, regions or let's say regimes. Um, 
which basically, um, whether they're in the mood or not, they change the daylight saving time or not. Um, for example, in Turkey in tw 2016, Erdogan said, okay, let's stop doing daylight saving time. Let's just stick with one time for the whole year. And then one year later in 2017, they said, no, let's do it again. Because <laughs> um, basically, um, I don't know which, which time it was, but one of the two changes was based on polit politics. They just wanted to boycott the EU and be further away from the EU to like, um, like um, handicap economic growth or economic trade between the two. So it's based on uh, yeah, politics and economics. And, uh, and then if Turkey wasn't bad enough, wh what country is this? Egypt. Yeah, Egypt. Uh, they basically said in 2010, uh, okay, uh, let's cancel uh, daylight saving time. Um, and in 2011, they said, uh, okay, let's do daylight saving time again. Um, and then 2014, they said, okay, let's cancel it again. Uh, but it was in the middle of summer, so they said, let's cancel it now instead of waiting till the till fall. Uh, so it's like every time, I mean, everyone knows that uh, Egypt struggled with different regimes and uh, a lot of coups and stuff like this. And every time someone else was in power, they basically changed it for the fun of it. I don't know. Um, yeah, th they like the power of changing things. Every, every like, strike there or every... Um, Every time they would hit the street, they would be like, we want change. What change? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> some change, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so You can add Argentina to the mix, too. Yeah? They made all provinces decide what they want. Sorry? They? they made all provinces just to... Provinces? They want, uh, provinces. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Every province has a chance and to... And then they undid it. Okay. <laughs> and then they tried it again. Uh, yeah. So it's based, uh, based on whether, like, the federal government has more power or not, um, kind of. It was really more like a popular thing. People were saying, yeah. let's try it out and so, but not everyone wanted it. And it's a very tall country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They changed the time. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't yeah. change the time. They did. A few times they changed the time. So depending on which provinces you were living on, so you yeah. may have to adjust your time or not. And mm -hmm. the next year, not anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So in, in Europe, we've been talking about this topic for a couple of years, whether we should daily do daylight saving time or not. In my opinion, we should, uh, because we actually have a lot of uh, differences in between uh, long days and short days. If we l would live closer to the equator, I would say, okay, let's quit doing this stuff, but we're, we're pretty stable in Europe and let's keep it this way. That's my, that's my opinion. Okay, let's talk about uh, something different than just time and time zones. Let's talk about calendars. Calendars are like, um, we are talking about a period of time and we want to segregate this in smaller pieces. So sun goes up, sun goes down. We have 24 hours in a day, but how do we group those days? We have weeks, that's one way of grouping things. Um, weeks, how long, how long is one week? Seven days, pretty logical. What's the first day of the week? It depends, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So traditional Christians and Hebrew people, um, I say people, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but uh, they just uh, agree <coughs> that the first day of the week is Sunday. By the way, the International Standards Organization, organization ISO says the first day of the week is Monday, so let's stick with that. Um, but what's the first week of the year? Depends of your religion again, because what when is the first w when is the when is New Year? There's Chinese New Year as well. Yeah. So there's a, a lot of um, talks about this and what is the first year week of the year and um, how do we count weeks? I think this year ends with week 52, but next year also has a week 53 if I'm not uh, if I'm not mistaken. So it's very confusing. Um, so one level up, months. How many weeks are in one month? Ah, shit. <laughs> okay, what kind of month are we talking about? Uh, there's two types of months. There's lunar months and tropical months. The lunar month months are based on the um, like movement of the moon, <laughs> obviously. Um, but the rotation of the moon is like 29.5 days. Shit. Hmm. Okay, so that's kind of complicated because if you have multiple moons, then when do you... Uh, decide if it's a new month or not because it's a half day. Um, tropical is based on the year. So we have uh, 
the mo movement of the Earth around the sun, the globe around another globe. Um, and the sun is probably moving as well, but uh, we'll just observe with our s the, the, the sun, the light we get from the sun. So tropical is based on uh, 12 months in one year. So one rotation around the, mo around the sun is 12 different months and we just separate it. Um, we have a system for this, like January is 31 days, February is 27, depending on the year, obviously. Um, so we just divide it in 12 fixed parts and all those parts together are 300, how many days, 50, depends. Uh, <laughs> and some of, these, some of these months are called August and July based off the Roman emperors and blah, 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 but it depends on where you live and your religion. And then we have years. So we have months with uh, lunar and tropical. The same is true with years. We have lunisolar versus tropical. So tropical is based like uh, based on uh, science, <coughs> how the Earth uh, rotates around the sun. So one year is one rotation around the sun. But lunisolar is based on rotations of the, of the moon. So 12 lunar rotations or 12 lunar cycles is one year. It depends. Sometimes they um, do, just to like keep kind of the same with tropical, they sometimes do 13 months. And depending on the religion or sub-religion, there's a lot of debate in this in the Hindu world. Uh, so there's a lot of like subcultures in Hinduism uh, and all of them, they're always like discussing about whether we should d do 12 months this year or next year. So it's, it's a very uh, hard things to discuss um, unless you're obviously like observing like tropical years, then it's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, for us, uh, one year has 365 days or 366, depending if it's a leap year. So every fourth year, there's a leap year with an extra day, but except 100 years. And then there's an exception to the exception every 400 years. And I think millennia, no, millennia don't have exceptions. So there's exceptions to exceptions to leap years. Um, and we actually, uh, let's come back to the laser with the, uh, the atomic clocks. Actually, the Earth, the rotation of the Earth around its own axis and the rotation of the Earth around the Sun, um, it's pretty volatile. Um, the lasers are too precise. So our atomic clocks are too precise and sometimes we have to add an extra second at the end of a year. So with leap uh, days and leap years, like an exceptions on exceptions, we still do not <coughs> like get to the precise uh, amount of seconds per year. So sometimes they say, oh, okay, the atomic clock is getting a little bit of a um, advancement on the real tropical year. So we need to add uh, an extra second at the end of the year, which is pretty um, challenging for daytime libraries and all kinds of Unix libraries that uh, we use for timing. Uh, because sometimes you can have like the end of the year plus one second, and if someone just clicks or we register an event, then it's pretty complicated. Anyway, um, also we count years. Uh, wouldn't make sense to say, oh, last year or five years ago, but I have no reference in time. Uh, so we, we all know AD and BC before Christ. What is AD? Anyone knows? Wow, you're smart. Anno Domini. Uh, Anno Domini is. Uh, after the Christ the Redeemer, stop, something like this. I don't, I'm not good with words. Um, so we basically, uh, right now it's 2019. This is an old slideshow. Um, we are 2019 after the Redeemer, after Anno Domini. Um, it's not after, Anno Domini. And 1500 BC before Christ. Um, but for example, the Muslim in the Muslim world, um, they started counting or their year zero was at 1439 after Christ. So since Mohammed. But actually we should say that's so many years ago for now because we, it's hard to compare like their um, savior with our savior. I'm not even Christian, but um, it's hard to compare like Mohammed with uh, Christ. So we actually should say like, uh, six or uh, seven hundred um, fifty. Uh, I'm I'm not good with math. Seven hundred fifty years ago, uh, they had their uh, z year zero, 
Uh, and Hinduism, they have they had their point zero, depending on the subculture of Hinduism, they had their subculture more than 5,000 years ago. Um, and because they use uh, lunisolar years, they kind of stay the same with us. It, they're not like counting two years in our one year. It's kind of the same, luckily. Uh, so there's leap years. I talked about this before, leap years and leap seconds because lasers are too accurate. Um, at, at the end of 2016, the last time we had an extra leap second just to keep our atomic clocks in sync with Earth rotation. It's kind of weird. So let's talk about something more technical. I've been talking about a lot of uh, nomenclature, vocabulary and stuff, um, and how we express stuff and why we have these different standards. So let's talk about the real standards here. Um, ISO standards, I mean, and programming and how to store it in a way that we can transform it to whatever way we want. So there's different ways of expressing time. There's uh, AM and PM. Uh, ante and post meridian, um, but in most places, and the ISO standard is uh, 18, 18 o'clock or 18.05 or something instead of 6.05 p.m. Um, there's also different ways of expressing a date. You can say it's September, but this is pretty time uh, or language based. September 18, because like, different languages have different names for the month. Um, and then there's 0918 or 1908. Uh, so it's kind of confusing and sometimes it's an invalid, but 0606 would be valid. Um, so you don't know which format it is, so it's kind of guessing which month it is. Um, but the ISO standard says you have to write the year first and then a dash and then the month first and then the month second, a dash and then um, and then the day of the month uh, with uh, padded zeros as well. This is easier to read for uh, computers. Um, how do we store time? Uh, we can store timestamps. Who does? Who likes that? Storing timestamps. <laughs> timestamps are um, integers or like big integers. They just keep adding up. But when was time zero? Yeah, so 1970, first January 1970 at midnight, right? At the switch of the year. Um, this like gives you um, gives you errors or kind of bugs. You can go negative, of course, if you want, but it doesn't really make sense. Uh, and if you're on a 32-bit system, you're kind of limited in how long you can use this system because after 2038, it seems like a long way from now, but we've been uh, I mean, 1970 was further away than 1938. We're closer to 2038, actually, than to 1970. So we're actually running out of 32-bit uh, timestamps. Um, so there's an RFC for this. It's a kind of a standard re request for comments, I think, RFC says. 3,339, and this is the, the way that you should store timestamps. Uh, so you have the date part uh, and then a separation with a T, which says what the timestamp will be. Uh, plus, you can add the, so this is the, the comparison with UTC. The time zone information is in here as well. So 0530, which, which means India probably. Um, so yeah, you can store this. Um, and you also have the RC3239 extended version of this, which adds some decimals to the seconds, uh, just three second, three decimals, which equates to microseconds. Uh, you can even go more granular with six digits, but the RC only includes three, second, three uh, digits, which uh, equ uh, equates with microseconds. So you can store this, but um, Preferably, you would sort this in UTC, just uh, normalize it to UTC and store it like this. Why, you would ask, you could ask me. Um, it's very simple, because you can store them all in one database, and you, then you can sort it. So no matter where a record was recorded, what, whether that was in India or in South America, you just convert it into UTC, store that, and then you can say, well, um, in the absolute space of time, this happened before this. 
So you can order an entire table based on this one column. Um, so the time zone uh, information you should store on the user object or whatever somewhere in the front end because it's only a representation. You want to rep represent this time compared to how the user is uh, observing time right now. So store the time zone or the locale. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't store like CET and CEST, but I would store like um, the user's uh, Europe slash Brussels string instead of CET. Because in future, locations might, be, might, be, might behave differently. Uh, for example, Egypt and stuff, they might say, oh, we're not going to observe this, but we're going to observe that. And then we can like use the daytime libraries and the s Linux system and subsystem and stuff to actually fetch which time zone was happening at this time at this location. So I would store the locality, not the time zone, um, and I would store everything in UTC plus um, microsecond. Just gives you more granularity. Um, so for us, this would be Europe slash Brussels. So this is a PHP meetup, so I just included a tiny, tiny section in PHP, a tiny chapter here. Uh, we have two global methods called date and timestamp, microtime, uh, and those give you like information about the time. But obviously, uh, I prefer object-oriented uh, programming, and I prefer to use something called a daytime object. So I can new up a daytime object, and this will be of interface. This will be interfaced with daytime interface. And there's also a little brother called like big brother, whatever you want to call it, called daytime immutable. And this object, as, as it says itself, it's not changing state. So once you have a reference to an object, it's always going to capture the state of the daytime at this time. And if you try to modify it, it's going to return you a new object. So the value of the object is never, ever changing. <coughs> you can switch in between the two by doing daytime immutable uh, factory methods, create for immutable, and then you can give it a mutable object. This will give you, uh, if you, I prefer to use value objects and I prefer to make them um, immutable so they never change state. And if I inject or if I create them with a timestamp or a daytime object, um, I can actually use the reference somewhere else and change the daytime and then I would change the value of the value object. And for this, I use a daytime immutable object inside the value object so that I know that this object will never change if someone else has a reference to it and tries to change it. This, this is just to prevent bugs. Um, since PHP 7.1, this is a long time ago, we're already at 7.4 since this week, um, there's been a new change. If you, or it's kind of a regression, I think. Uh, if you create a new daytime immutable object or daytime, it doesn't matter, um, it's gonna include microsecond information. So since 7.1, that's a, a tiny change. Um, so format U will return the six digits. It's actually more than microsecond information. It's more granular. It has six digits. Um, and before PHP 7.1, this would just return 000, unless you actually set it. Uh, you can just you, you could use pr prior to PHP 7.1, you could use the microtime global function to get uh, those six digits and inject it into an object if you really needed that. <coughs> so, as I told you before, the state of an object, of an immutable object, never changes. So, if you change the time zone information on the daytime if by using set time zone, Europe slash Rome, you actually return, get returned a new object with a new state. This is just the previous state with a sli slight alteration based on the method that you call. So, the date object and the when in Rome object are two different objects with a different state, and they will never change once they are created. created. Um, and then the, the PHP daytime objects, they have a lot of magic. I call it magic because you don't know exactly what will happen unless you try it. Um, so new daytime emittable now returns an based on the current time zone, or uh, based on the current time, and microsecond time, it will re return you a value object of the current time. And then you can call modify. And modify takes a string, and it's going to parse that string and do some stuff with it. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. I Googled the docs once, and there's almost no test for this in PHP. I tried to, uh, a couple of years ago, I tried to 
add some dust for this to make it um, official <laughs> um, because it's kind of hard to uh, uh, to know what to expect here. So first day of next month is ex an example of a string you can insert into this modify method. And this would actually like forward to date until the, cha the, the month in the daytime object changes. Um, but you can also do uh, first weekday. Any guesses what this does? It's gonna count forward until it reaches a weekday. I mean, Monday to Friday, that's a weekday. Uh, and Saturday and Sunday are not weekdays. So if you have a, a daytime object which points to Sunday and you day do first weekday, it's gonna return you the next Monday. But if you call this for an object that's already a weekday, it's gonna say the next weekday. So first weekday is, is kind of, it doesn't really do what you expect, depends who you are, of course. I would expect it would return this current time because current time is Monday, it's a weekday, it's fine. Uh, so there's a lot of bugs that can happen with this magic. So try to stay away from it. Uh, try to use um, a library. I'll come back to this later. There's a lot of daytime libraries which have a more clear uh, way of doing this, like first weekday and stuff. If you try to use the modify method and use your own first, first weekday, tr make sure you test your logic well. Um, and then there's uh, a feature called underflow or overflow. When you say new daytime object, with this string, with zero, 00 as the date information, it's gonna count one day back. This is useful when you don't know if the previous month has 30 days or 31 days or 28 or 27. <coughs> anyway, so it's a it's an underflow feature. You can just set it to zero, which is not a day, but it's gonna count back from one. It's gonna count back one day to find the previous day. Um, and then there's the overflow feature, which uh, basically uh, if you if you would say February 29th, it's gonna add a few days to 27 or 28, depending on the year, and it's gonna say, oh, uh, right now it's March. Or yeah, this example is with June, but you can also do this with February. It's an overflow feature. So if you add a day to the uh, of this month, which doesn't exist, it's gonna skip to the next month and give you that. Um, also, when you omit the 1900 or 2000s, uh, there's some weird stuff that can happen. <laughs> uh, for example, 69, 12, 31, you would think, yeah, like, okay, 20, 69, uh, 12, 31, so 31st of December of this year. But if you, <laughs> this is, you would think that this is only one day of difference, uh, but it's actually uh, like almost 100 years of difference because of this uh, timestamp uh, root, like the, the old way of storing times. So if you do 70, it's gonna say, okay, 1970, but 69, what are we gonna do after seven, or after this century? What are we gonna do? So it's best always to use 1900 and 2021 uh, in the next century. There's a couple of libraries which extend the, the fe functionality in PHP, and I find it useful for the, to avoid using the magic for the modify method. If you want to just find the next weekday, you're gonna, there's some extra sugar syntax here, syntax sugar, some extra methods on these packages. Uh, they basically uh, extend the, the current daytime or the, the core PHP daytime object. Uh, the first one is mutable, the second one is immutable. Uh, I think the first one now also has a version with immutability as well. Um, and they also have a feature called diff for humans. So it's gonna, it's gonna return um, when, you diff, when you diff to daytime objects, it's gonna say, this is two seconds later. So in two seconds, or in 10 seconds, or in one minute, or in one week. But um, one time I was working on a project and there were two different libraries which were doing this. And we expected them to return the same results, but some, one of the two libraries would say um, in less than a minute instead of in 30, sec uh, 30 seconds ago. So there's slight differences. Also sometimes when, for example, 91 seconds would be two minutes ago, but some, some other library would say, oh no, it's still one minute ago because it's less than two minutes ago. So there's like different cutoffs and different um, internationalization. So you, you can also set like, language files to say, 
um, in the second instead of in five seconds. So you can change the language there. And it's kind of, it's good, but uh, be careful when you use different. Uh, um, they also have like a lot of configuration to deal with uh, 30 seconds or is this one minute or should I still say 30 seconds? There's a lot of logic there that you can set. So you can get pretty fine grained and pretty specific with this. Um, something that's not in PHP, but I like to add it to projects is uh, a clock interface. Uh, instead of doing new daytime now or getting objects, uh, since PHP 7.1, when you get two objects straight after another, they have different information because the microsecond information changed. Well, if you wait long enough in a clock cycle. So I like to use something called a clock so that I can reproduce this and I can get the same now timestamp every single time. And I can also inject a test clock here uh, so that I never have issues with uh, two different uh, daytime instances which are like microseconds away from each other in a test. This is just uh, easier to test because otherwise sometimes you unit tests might fail and 90% of the time they don't fail. So let's talk about the future. Huh, time. Uh, I talked about stuff in the Egyptian time when they had a big empire, uh, but let's talk about what's next for us. Everyone knows this um, equation. It's an equation by Einstein, and it says E is mc squared. E stands for energy, m stands for mass, and c stands for speed of light. Speed of light exactly. Speed of light is approximately <laughs> 299 million meters per second. Um, actually, speed of light, light is electromagnetic waves. So the speed of electromagnetic waves is this fast. It's pretty fast. No, it doesn't change. Depending on the medium. Yeah, in vacuum, it's super fast. Yeah. But actually, no, in, in, uh, the, in, in all mediums, it's, it's equally fast. If it's not, then it's not electromagnetic waves, but sound waves or something. Um, so everything is always the same, the same speed. Uh, this is just an approximation. Um, but it also defines how fast we can send the information through space. I talk, I'm talking about space, but I'm actually talking about space. So right now there's a Tesla Roadster with a spaceman, or what, what's his name, uh, flying through space in a uh, like orbit around the sun and Mars and whatnot. Um, but if you actually want to send a message to him, um, it would take several minutes because he's so far away. He's more than a million meters away, so it's going to take multiple seconds. Actually, Mars, um, this is the destination where we're going in so many years. Um, when Mars is the closest to the Earth, when we want to send an electromagnetic pulse or signal, whatever, or like um, TCP package, whatever, if you want to send some, something uh, to Mars, it's going to take at least 182 seconds. That's a big ping time. So if you want to have like connection with Mars and have an internet there, we're going to have to have like local relays and like local servers. Google is going to send some servers there. Um, but the f when Mars is on the opposite side of the sun, one, um, like one package takes 100, no, 1,342 seconds. That's a round time of 22 minutes. That's a very long ping time. So just to, we're, we basically, we won't be able to Skype with our friends in Mars. <laughs> um, we will be able to send video messages, but it will be very async. Um, so it's gonna need a separate ping time, a uh, separate internet there. We won't, we won't have like internet switching to Mars <coughs> ever. Just technologically, it's not possible. Even with the best technology in, uh, in 2000 years, we will not be able to have a, a like a streaming video to Mars. So whenever you see a video and people are like Skyping through the, in no, it's not, it doesn't work. Um, so Mars is a different planet. Different planet means different rotation, different rotation around the sun as well. Actually on Mars, one day is almost the same as one day on Earth. It's 24 Earth hours, 39 minutes, and 35.244 seconds of Earth time. 
So basically when we go to Mars, we won't have like a strange biorhythm stuff because one day is about the same. One year, however, because Mars is further away from the sun. So if this is the, <laughs> if this is the relative uh, distance between the sun and earth, then Mars is here. So it's, it takes a lot, a lot longer to um, do one loop around the sun. So basically, uh, Mars will have 687 days per year. <laughs> so yeah, you'll have a lot less birthdays. <coughs> anyway, um, so one day on Mars is 24 hours, 39 minutes. That's more time than on Earth. So basically, Elon Musk, he's always behind on deadlines, right? He always says, oh yeah, we'll have the Model X in 2016, but it was 2018. Um, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, so Elon Musk is already on Mars time. <laughs> Smart guy. Um, basically, what this means for us programmers is that we will need a new daytime library. A new daytime library with some new settings, uh, like radius of the planet we are on and radius of the, the circle around the sun and also, um, what else? Yeah, exactly. Probably, I think. Dep and also like different time zones on Mars. It's gonna be weird, um, but we can do this. We can just have a fork of daytime and just change it to the parameters of Mars. All right, let's uh, warp up, uh, wrap up. Um, so we talked about um, analogical times and you know, like sundials, but then they invented clocks and with, how do you call them? I don't know hands, the hands on the clock. Um, yeah, and they started to sync them up and then we got into different time zones. Uh, we have a few quirks here and there, uh, but it works. We have daylight saving time in some places, some places not, depending on where you're closer to the equator. Uh, we have daytime information in PHP, which luckily is pretty stable. I, I like to use it. Um, uh, it handles everything pretty well. Uh, I haven't tested the leap second yet, but I, m I imagine there will be a bug there. Anyway, thank you for your uh, <laughs> time. <laughs> Do we have time for questions? No, I, I don't have a question. Okay. One remark, one very important thing, okay. because you showed uh, the standard time. Yeah. Uh, and if you're using the PHP daytime object, you can't use the eagle format Oh yeah, true. Uh -huh. There's Atom and there's W three C and there's different. Yeah. But I I like to use C or RFC three three nine 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 three 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 nine. I think you can use date underscore RFC three 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 nine. Yeah, That's a correct one. Yeah, but I wanted to remark that you shouldn't use the ego format because it's wrong. <laughs> okay. 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 And they see now we know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. You cannot just break stuff. How is that? Oh, really? So then it adds a millisecond and another millisecond. Oh, wow, okay. So you don't have problems with like time going backwards. And when is the year, like throughout the year? Or is that just, okay, December will start in January? I don't know. That's crazy, yeah. Yeah, that's why you have MTP, right? It's a network time protocol, I guess. So it's someti sometimes you sync up with this yeah. server. So it's basically the server saying, eh, we're not accurate anyway, so yeah, why, d why bother with leap seconds? Crimea? Oh, yeah, 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 true, true. Yeah. Yeah. I do, I do astronomy a lot, and we use only the leap speed. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't need any settings or anything. Yeah, we could just, we could also just get rid of uh, time zones, uh, and then people would say, yeah, I wake up at 2 a.m. Yeah, it's also the space flight. Because, yeah, you just, for you, you have different standards. 
it's like the people it's like the people in Poland they just say oh we wake up and we start working at 7 or 8 a.m. because it makes sense for us yeah yeah exactly yeah no it's still like this so if you just say new daytime 69, then it's gonna auto-complete it with the 20, and if it's 70, it's gonna auto-complete it with 90. It doesn't make sense, but for backward compatibility, we still have to do it. So don't use it. Don't don't new up a daytime instance with this. Just give the complete year. Also, it's pretty biased because obviously our 2019 is not the same as for Muslims. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the ISO is pretty much based on, or the ISO standards are pretty much much based on like Christianity and 